They say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by... Harvest Energy Solutions, Harvest Cabins, when you absolutely have to get away. The city of Stanford, Kentucky, come back home to Stanford. Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. Good Foods Co-op, Marksbury Farm Market, Weisenberger Mill, your village shop. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Nikki will be up here in a minute. She's getting some dessert ready. But first up, it's finally getting cooler. Today, it barely broke 70 degrees. What does that mean? Well, our smoker that we built not too long ago. Now, that's not to cook big pieces of meat, it's to season things, it's to smoke things, it's, a, it's more of a cold smoker. I don't want my temperature in there getting up very high. Now I could, if I wanted to, build that fire in the back a little hotter and cook something low in there, but mainly that's for curing meat, for smoking meat. The one reason I built this particular smoker is the fact that I love smoked cheese. Now you say, well how can you smoke cheese? It's probably the simplest thing you'll ever try to do if you're smoking cheese. Now the most important question is, what type of cheese do you want to smoke? You want a harder, firmer cheese. Now when you think about the stuff you buy in the store that's smoked, probably one of the most common cheeses that you find smoked is Gouda cheese. So we have got some Gouda cheese, but I'm also going to take some Swiss cheese. Now that is not your hardest cheese, but we've also got two cheddars here, a sharp cheddar and a regular cheddar cheese here. Now. These cheese melt at about 100 degrees, maybe a little bit less than that. So we are gonna strive not to get our temperature very high. That's why fall is the best time for me when I wanna think about cold smoking stuff and doing sides of bacon and hams and so on and so forth. When you get some smoke rolling in the old smokehouse, there's nothing like it. And you think, how long does it take to smoke cheese? You would think hours and hours and days and days. The good part is you really only need to roll smoke over that cheese for about an hour, maybe two hours at the most. You don't have to permeate that cheese all the way through. The flavor is on the outside. When you cut through that cheese, every slice, you'll have smoke flavor just from the outside. We're going to try to keep our temperature around 80 degrees. We don't need to go much higher than that at all. And the colder it is outside, the better. That's the great thing about a smoker like this. So when this smokehouse was built, John manufactured that accordingly. He put the firebox away from the smokehouse enough that those temperatures could stay back. Now today, it's barely broken 70 degrees. It's gonna get cooler here in a little while. We're gonna build that fire all the way back at this end. And we're gonna let that smoke draw up across that cheese. We're gonna let it go for an hour, an hour and a half at the most. And we have smoked cheese. Now again, we don't want the temperatures to get too high. We're gonna have melted cheese, which is good, but that's not what we're going for here. So normally, I like hickory on everything uh, when it comes to meat. When it comes to cheese, I really, really like apple. That's just my preference. That's what we've got today. We're soaking our apple wood as we speak. Now, with this particular smokehouse, we are gonna pull a lot of smoke across. You might have a little discoloration, but you're not gonna expect this cheese to come out brown. It's just not gonna happen. So I'm about done talking. Now it's time for action. We're gonna have some smoked cheese, hopefully in about an hour, hour and a half. Now, I started with natural wood charcoal. 
Then I use the charcoal starters from Big Green Egg, which, by the way, we're going to have some Big Green Egg recipes coming up very shortly. And I didn't put very much charcoal in there because we don't have to burn this very long. And I'm all back on this end of it because we don't want a whole lot of temperature. We just want smoke. I had my applewood soaking in water. Again, I like applewood for cheese. Once my charcoal started to burn down, I put my wet applewood on there. All right, let's see if we're drawing smoke. Oh, what is that? Hmm, where there's smoke, there must be cheese. Arguda is first. All right, first Arguda and our extra sharp cheddar. Vermont cheddar and our Swiss. And again, we're only going to go for about an hour here. Now I'm pulling a lot of smoke and I'm going to watch the temperature. And I don't want to go for over an hour here. All right, here we go. I actually wish it was a little chillier out. Colder the better. We're going to keep that around 85 degrees, 80 degrees if possible. Okay, as our apple wood is smoking away, we got a temperature of about a little over 80 degrees. Fall is in the air, thank goodness. Nikki's working on a surprise for us in here. But recently, she wanted to decorate the cabin. She always wants pumpkins. She always wants butternut squash, which we might have a recipe for tonight. But as she's getting things ready, Halloween's right around the corner. We gotta go get some pumpkins. Where are we gonna go? Happy Jack Pumpkin Farm in Franklin County, Kentucky, right around the corner. Got all kinds of great stuff. Richard Jones, Happy Jack Pumpkin Farm. <laughs> what county are we in? Franklin County. So you're still in Franklin County? Uh-huh. We say Happy Jack Pumpkin Farm, but there's a lot more than pumpkins out here. All kinds of animals that are within sight. I would say kids would love that. I'm seeing tractors. I'm thinking there's all kinds of fall stuff to do out here, activities. And do you have mazes and things like that to walk through? We do. We have uh, the Enchanted Forest. We have a couple acres of uh, over there that used to be a Christmas tree farm, but we abandoned that and we just let it grow up and we decided to cut a labyrinth out in it and so we cut around it through there and, and kids love that. Now we're out here to get butternut squash for a recipe to make a soup out of. Uh -huh. That's rather delicious. But she also wants to decorate her cabin. There's all kinds of decorative pumpkins and regular pumpkins and all kinds of squashes you can eat. But did, do you grow the tomatoes and the, and the apples? No, we, we don't grow the apples. We get them from, it's Ayers Apple Orchard in Owen County but we grow everything else, the tomatoes. We grow, uh, all total, we grow about 10 acres of produce. Oh, wow. And we retail and wholesale all of that. Purple sweet potatoes. You don't see those every day. No, you don't. I went to a produce auction that sold plants and I found these plants a couple of springs ago. How do they taste compared to regular sweet potatoes that we're used to, the Beauregards? Or... Well, if you're blindfolded, there's not hardly any difference. They're real sweet, they're a little drier. Hmm. A little dry, you put a little extra butter on it. <laughs> Some honey too, a gotcha. little honey. You got honey out here too, right? I saw we a bunch do. Of bees. There's, there are around 50 hives. So they keep busy, uh -huh. busy as bees. You know what, <laughs> thank you so much. We're gonna go shopping around and grab a bunch of stuff and carry out a big bag out Alrighty. here. All righty. Thank Good. you so much. Good, glad you came out. How do they get here again? What's the address? 966 Hickman Hill Road. Frankfurt, mm -hmm. Kentucky. It's, uh, we're out 421 South. Gotcha. All right, we got 85 degrees. We got smoke. All right, let's come out in order. It's not melted. <laughs> it's a good thing. Here's the sh extra sharp other cheddar and the Swiss. Now look, probably the Swiss absorbed a little more color than everything else. So look here, that's the finished product. Now let's talk about our firebox is right here. Now look at the length of the firebox. Then you have a chamber here, then you have the base, then you have the smokehouse itself. What I did to maintain the temperature that I wanted was build my fire right here. Now look how far that smoke has to travel. The heat can dissipate by the time it gets all the way over here and comes up. That looks perfect. Now there's only one thing left to do is take it inside, put it on a cutting board, 
chop a little piece off and see how it tastes. So Mrs. Farmer, do you come here often? Only when you're here cooking. You know what? I'm going to let you be my independent wow. taste tester. You did this? All right. Yeah. You know what? We love smoked cheese. We love cheese, period. But when you add a little smoky flavor to it, oh, let me tell you. Yummy. That smells good just pulling that off. Can I taste it? You want to cut? I'll tell you what, let's do this. Let's start. This is something that I really wanted to try. This is, um, that's smoked Swiss. Oh, wow. That's good. Mmm. Wow. Mmm. That's one of our cool little rata knives. That's the cheese slicer. All right, next, how about some What's this cheddar? Mmm. 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 Oh, yeah. That's a good snack. What's this one? This is extra sharp. Okay. They're all good. Ooh. They have a really good flavor. Wow. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> They're all pretty good. I'm, I'm, what's this one? That's our Gouda. Right. I'm going to pull that off of there. That's good too. I, the Swiss is my favorite because I've never tasted smoked Swiss cheese. I got to tell you. They're all delicious. Yeah, they are. That is special. That's special. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. But these two are special. Mm -hmm. But now, I mean, this is on our snack tray. Yeah. This will last us at least two, three days. Or an hour, you, if I don't hide it. <laughs> all right, let's set that out of the way. And let's talk about, we went and got our squash. Now, last year we made pumpkin soup. That was delicious. <laughs> it was good. This year, we're going to take our butternut squash and make... Butternut squash soup? That's what I'm talking about. Okay. It's very good stuff. Let's get this out of the way. When we come back... It's soup time. Yay. And we're going to start on this soup. This soup right here is going to be sweet because the very nature of the squash itself is sweet. But we're also going to have elements that include like onions. Is that the butter. Martian? Nice. <laughs> they, go with you. they go with your shirt. Thank you. We're going to have the onions. We're going to have brown sugar. We're going to have nutmeg. We're going to have allspice. That sounds good. We're going to have cream cheese. You see where I'm going with this? I do. And this was inspired by a soup that we had at a local uh, chain restaurant. What did you think about the uh, Happy Jacks pumpkin farm? That was fun. I was that cool? Yes. Seeing the animals and the critters. and Got all my there decorations. There's so many neat places all over Kentucky. And that's just right on our back door. They're such nice people. They are nice people. Did those help? They did help. I didn't cry. They didn't did really cry. well. All right, we've cut these up fairly small because we kind of want these. These are going to be processed with everything else. They're going to be absorbed into the mesh of beautiful mm. flavors. Now, if you will, take that butternut squash there. We need at least a couple pounds of squash peeled. Okay, peeled and cut. Cut into little cubes. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. I mean, look at that. And the smell. That smells really good. It's sweet. Makes you ready for fall. Mm. Now, look at here. As our onions are going. This was our lard from last week. I expect it to have a little darker color after coming out of that, Looks good. that cast iron. But let me tell you what. That is beautiful, beautiful stuff. That's our lard, which we will be using just a little bit later. Yeah, I'm going to put these in here. And this is going to give all this a little bit of a... I'm going to brown it up just a bit, and you'll have that taste in there along with the onions. At this point, I'm going to add a tiny bit more butter. This is a soup, and I like my soups. This is this is a conglomeration of ideas that I'm putting together. This will be the first time we've tried this. I'm sure so if it's really good. bad, <laughs> we'll tell you. But I doubt that it's going to be because we've made stuff like this, and you can imagine the more you cook... You know what you're good at that I like? I eat something at a restaurant and I say, Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. You said, you know what I'm good at that you like? That I love? You can do that all day long. Okay. You can just tell me things like that. I like when you grow your beard. But no, what I like is that I will eat something at a restaurant and say, Ooh, I love this. Can you make this? And you'll smell it and that's taste what, that's it. That's what we did today. And then you create it. I like that. You know what? Learn how to use your sniffer. No, it was like a hound dog. You know, uh, Raul, who's not with us anymore, he spent time with me and he, he would put his hand over my eyes and make me smell stuff. Learn the different smells. Test yourself in your kitchen. Have fun. Do it with your partner. Do it with folks around you who like to cook. Well, if there's, while I'm stirring this, if there's anything else that you want to talk about, that things, about you things that wonderful. you like about me, <laughs> I mean, you can just 
Just yeah. keep going. I'm, I'm right here. Gosh, now I'm going to take it. three cups <laughs> of chicken broth. And we're going to put it in there. Now what we're going to do at this point is we're going to go ahead and put, let's say, a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg in okay. there. Does that sound about right? That sounds good. And that's about all you need of that. And then we're going to come back with some allspice. Gotta How much allspice? allspice? Eh, not, I love allspice. Not quite as much. Now remember, you can put it in, but you can't take it out. So go lightly. While we're simmering this for about 20 minutes, do you want to revisit the pie? I would like to make the pie. The what? The vinegar pie. Do Vin I say the pie? The vinegar what? Pie. Do I say pie. it funny? <laughs> I thought it was pie. Pie? It's pie? But that's just me. In Kentucky, it's pie. It's pie. It's pie. Okay. While this is simmering in the background, let's clean this mess up. And we're going to kind of go back and forth. Okay. I want you to make the pie. And it's not my pie. It's, you have to read the letter. We'll read the letter in just a little while. All right, let's clean this mess up. All right, I've got another, oh, 10, 15 minutes before I start adding some more calorie-free things like cream <laughs> cheese and such. All right, now, obviously, in order to have a pie. Pie. You have to have a pie crust, right? Which we have right here. Now that to me looks pretty uh, homemade. It is very homemade. You it see, it's not perfect. I'm not a good pie crust maker, but it'll it looks taste good. good. To me. And actually, I, I made it earlier, and it's just and it's on page 31 in our cookbook okay. pie shell. Okay, I have a cup of flour. I put that with half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of sugar. I kind of beat that up with the fork a little, mm -hmm. get it together, and I add in a third cup of either lard or Crisco. I used our lard, mm -hmm. and then two tablespoons of water. Kind of mix it up till it looks good. I actually stuck that in the fridge a little while, pulled it out, and just I guess rolled, you it, rolled out. it out. Yeah, and it's nothing perfect, but that's kind of how I make a pie well, crust. The pie crust should not be perfect. It should look homemade. That's perfect as far as I'm concerned. They always taste good. So vinegar pie. And you... this recipe calls for having the pie shell baked ahead. Mm -hmm. So that's why I did that because we're going to actually boil the ingredients. Now this is. Uh, it's time for. We'll call. Normally we do it back on the couch, but listen, here we go. Let's hear the tinkling of a tiny piano. It's time for Country Kitchen Mail Call, brought to you by Nikki's Tiny Piano and Our Three Hands. All right, this is a letter we got in the mail. We did. It's a beautiful letter. Sweet we read the letter, if you will, before they show us the recipe. So this was my mama's recipe. It was her daddy's favorite. I make it for my husband, and he loves it. You and Nikki remind us of ourselves. We help each other as well. My husband, Bob, has Parkinson's and I have macular degeneration. That's the reason I write big. We love to fish and hunt. Bob, in March of 2014, had a deep brain stimulator. That's new technology where they actually put electrical sensations really? in the brain and that helps with the tremors. That's wonderful. That is nice. Keep up the good work. We really enjoy watching. This is from Angie. You know what? I love letters like that and we get a bunch of them, but on occasion, we're going to do this. If we get something that's interesting or old-fashioned, we're going to read your letter. And when we read your letter and use your recipe, we're going to send you something in the mail. So we're going to send Angie something very nice in the mail. And now let's hear about vinegar pie. And this is, this so is simple. old fashioned. This is simple. This is old timey stuff. I love it. All right. And what she does is she has all her ingredients. We're going to put all these into here mm -hmm. together. So the first thing we need is three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. All right. Vinegar pie. And apple cider, she says, you have to use. Now we need four tablespoons of flour. Now we need three egg yolks, and I'm gonna save the whites. So I'm gonna divide these eggs up. Let's hope I do this good. And we're gonna save that for later. And I'm watching. Look at you. Wow. My mama You've taught done me that. that before. My mommy taught me that. That's from a lady who's made a lot of wedding cakes. That's right. Oh, you're right, I forgot about that. Now that's one thing a one-armed man might have an issue with. I bet you could do it. Yeah, I bet I could. Let's see I you try. No, I don't want to. That'd be a whole show right there. And I'm getting all messy here. But you did it. You pulled it off. There, we got our, we got our egg eggs. Egg whites right got our egg whites for later. We're going to make those into meringue later. All right, now we need a cup of sugar and a tablespoon of butter. You want me to cup off me a tablespoon there? A tablespoon? Yeah. And then I have one and a half cups of water here. I think, I am pretty sure that I had this as a kid in Maysville. I've never had this, so I'm you excited to try I it. I remember yeah. some of those church ladies. Oh my goodness, they can cook. Good stuff. All right, now we're going to boil it. We're okay. going to I'm going to have you whisk it if you get me another burner going and we're going to get this All thick. Right. We got a lot of stuff coming together here at the same time. I'm taking a potato masher and I'm doing the first initial 
smashing. I put my apron on. Just making a mess. Because the last time I used an immersion blender, <laughs> I ruined the shirt. Okay. So we need to add some liquid. So let's put some half and half in there. Yeah, that yeah. won't be good. And let's uh, go ahead and dump that cream cheese in there, if you will. One eight ounce package of cream cheese. And let that get all acquainted in there. You're ready. Now we are going to make some meringue. This is almost done meringue, and now here's what she does. Here's her secret. She puts in, and I'm doing this exactly like, I hope I'm doing Angie justice, how she makes hers. She puts a tablespoon of sugar and a teaspoon of cornstarch in her meringue. All right, now we're gonna take this, see how thick that's got? Mm -hmm. Isn't that nice? We're gonna pour that right in. And you got the oven going for me? Mm -hmm. All we're gonna do is brown our meringue. So really, you don't have to cook this it's, it's done, essentially? So you right. just brown in the meringue? And, and then we're going to stick it in the fridge. And we're going to stick it in the fridge. So you I like easy stuff. Here's our meringue. Let's just kind of put that around on there. I'm just going to brown this. Mm -hmm. Let's just throw that in until this gets brown. And I'm going to add a bit of brown sugar. How much is a bit? It's that much right there, which That's is a approximately Be careful. two tablespoons. I know. This could get ugly. That's good. Oh. <laughs> it's not quite deep enough, but it's doing the job. You could take this out and do it in a blender, but it's hot. These things are great. The soup is golden. It's ready Wonderful. to go. You ready? Yes, go ahead. Since I like you, I'm gonna let you try the first bite. That's sweet. I'm gonna mix everything up. It's gonna be drippy. Mmm, mmm, that's delicious. That's really good. Creamy. Oh, wow. Do you like it? You know, and that's just trust my instincts. Mm. I'm doing kind of a, what we did with the pumpkin, but different. You know what? That's delicious. You do I good. like that better than pumpkin soup. I do too. Wow. We've got a busy day. Yes, we have. Now, uh, in between cleaning that up and bringing this out, we brought this out. This has been cooling for a while. I think it's probably cool enough to stick in a refrigerator. That look now. nice. That looks really nice. Let's chill it a little bit. All right, now we have taken our catfish, which has been soaking in buttermilk, and we've taken our cornmeal, and we're going to take Tony Chasseries. You like I wish that? somebody would give me the real way to pronounce that. It's this stuff right here. They're not our sponsors, but we use this stuff in almost everything. I put a bunch in here. Do you see how much I put in here? Yeah, it's good stuff, though. Look at that. Look how wow. pure and wonderful that looks. Oh, how much do we want? Oh, quite a bit. This is for the for fish, you. and that's for the potatoes. All right, our lard is ready. So we're gonna take our purple potatoes. Don't you just love that? I do love this. Dump those in here. Catfish. Yummy. In lard, not peanut oil, not deep fried, but pan fried. And this is just for our personal taste test. And how can you find out about what's going on at Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen? How would you find out? I would go to your Facebook page. I would go to the Facebook page, Tim, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen, and like it. You'll find out where we're going, events that might be coming up, shows that might be coming up. Also, timfarmerscountrykitchen.com, and look at our recipes. And we've got hundreds and hundreds of them because we eat almost every day. Yeah, we do. And we're always trying new stuff, and we want to share in that, and we're so thankful that you came to our kitchen to join us, this time for purple potatoes. <laughs> and put just a little bit of salt on this fish. Look how that fish is coming along nicely. Look at that. Looks good. Doesn't that look good? Mm -hmm. Browning up nicely. We're about to have us some good stuff. And then we get to try the pie. Let's try the purple potatoes first. What do you think? Mmm. <laughs> They're pretty, too. I'm trying to find something different about them. Do they taste any different to you? They're delicious. They're good. There's nothing wrong with that. Mmm. Very good. All right, now remember, this is lard as opposed to peanut oil. And it's going to be hot, so be careful. I'm afraid because it's hot. How is it? No doubt about it. Hands down, lard. Boom. Does that not taste like grandma's fish and chicken? Lard made it better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit about that. 
I've never tried this. I hope I did it all right. Vinegar pie. Mm hmm That looks pretty. It looks like looks like lemon meringue. See what I'm you think. I'm very anxious to try this. This is from Angie. Vinegar pie, we think. Wow. That's good. I thought maybe after cooking it and you wouldn't be able to taste the vinegar. You do, it's very distinct, but. It's really good. But you don't taste the cider so much as you do the apple. It's creamy with the butter. That's really good. Mm. You know what? I'm a fan. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's really good. That's delicious. We've about exhausted this half hour. Yes, we have. So that means it's time to talk about the fact that it's all about. Good times. Good friends. Good eats. Let's do it again. This, this is going to get cold. we got to eat this. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to Furniture World Superstore, Housewarmings, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office. Try something different tonight. L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Diamond Gusset Jeans. The original gusset jean. Careful craftsmanship. Continual improvement. Diamond Gusset Jeans. Born and worn in the USA since 1987. Hi, Tom. Hey, how's the college visit? You remember it. It's good. Does it make the short list? Yeah, I'm afraid so. Knowing our clients personally is what we do. It's OK. This is what we've been planning for. And with over 13,000 financial advisors, we do it a lot. It's why Edward Jones is the big company that doesn't act that way.